God brings you to it, God will bring you through it. In happy moments, praise God. In difficult moments, seek God. In quiet moments, praise God. In quiet moments, praise God. In difficult moments, seek God. In quiet moments, worship God. In painful moments, trust God. In every moment, thank God.
acquire knowledge, the prophet would tell his followers, seeking knowledge is the duty of every Muslim, male or female. It will befriend you in solitude. It will guide you to happiness. It will sustain you in misery. It will adorn you when you are amongst people, and it will be your shield and protect you against those who attack you. Whoever goes out in search of knowledge is on the path of God until returning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we have a real treat today. Our speaker will be Ida Mansour. Um, I was born in England. She uh, did joint honors degrees in biochemistry and physiology at King's College in London. Um, then, because I guess she wanted to, she went to California and did another degree. Um, she also has a chaplaincy degree and she is a chaplain for a number of mosques in um, the, the greater Hartford area. She has two children. She has a son who's going to George Washington and a daughter. Um, I've known Ida for a long time. Um, she spoke here last in 2009. And um, after the San Bernardino shootings, a number of us decided that we, it would be a, a, a good gesture to go to a local mosque. So we went to Ida's mosque. And um, it was quite something. For me, especially in the wake of that shooting, and there is so much media about um, about Muslim terrorists and about the divide of religions and all that sort of thing. And the the sermon that day was really something. Uh, the, the Imam talked about um, about Thanksgiving as a life disposition, and he's a wonderful speaker, extremely eloquent. Um, both, both abstract and great details for those of you who are working on papers for English. And he, he said, he said there's so many things that we that we can complain about in our lives. But he said let's just take a longer view of things. <coughs> what do we have? What do we have to be thankful for? And and among other things, he said, why do we give thanks to Allah in all things? It's I mean there. There are several reasons. One is that it, it takes the me out of everything. I'm thankful for something other than just what I'm getting or what just what I am. Um, it's also a way to form larger communities. And uh, at the end, he said, you just think of the things that we're all thankful for. And he's, this is again, he's talking to, to the people in the mosque. And he said, he said um, we we're thankful today that the people from Westover have come to our mosque to show their solidarity with us. In, in, again, in the wake of um, of all of this publicity about about you know the Muslim terrorists and all that sort of thing. And he said, it, and he said we have we can be thankful that these people are visiting us. And what was moving to me was that I was, as I was leaving, at least 20 people stood up. Um, lined up next to me, all of whom shook my hand um, as they were leaving, leaving the mosque. And the last thing I remember, the last man shook my hand and said, "You know, we need each other." Just very simply, um, but it was it was quite moving. And at that point, I knew that we needed to ask Ida to speak. So, um, please welcome Ida Monsoon. In the name of the one God, the most compassionate, the most kind. Good morning, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. May God's peace be with you all. I would like to thank Reverend Tom Hungerford and all of you for your hospitality in welcoming me. It's a real joy to be here, especially on this special day. It's such special and beautiful music, so thank you all for that. Um, I would like to thank you all for your concern for the Muslim community, for the compassion, love, respect, and 
and friendship shown. These have been difficult times for my community. With an increase in bigotry and hatred, I saw an ad recently on the internet put out by the Ku Klux Klan, the KKK, which read, the KKK wants you. Help us to fight the spread of Islam in our country. There is so much misinformation being spread about Islam. Hatred and xenophobia are at an all-time high. Recently, I read a poll where many said that they would support the bombing of Agraba. Agraba being, of course, a fictional city from Disney's Aladdin. <laughs> the conclusion from this poll was that many are open to bombing pretty much any place with an Arabic sounding name. There is so much misinformation being spread about Islam. The Quran very clearly defines what Islam is and who Muslims are. It is also very clear that those who call themselves Muslims and carry out terrorist activities usually against Muslims around the world are not familiar with the definitions as stated by our Holy Scripture. As Muslims, we affirm and uphold the sanctity of all human life, the taking of which is among the gravest of all sins. Suicide is forbidden in Islam, as only God can give life, and only God can take life. As Muslims, we affirm the right to freedom of thought, religion, conscience, and expression. As Muslims, we affirm the right to security in one's livelihood, profession, and home. As Muslims, we believe that God created us with all the diversity of race, religion, language, and belief to get to know one another, respect one another, and uphold our collective human dignity. As Muslims, we believe that Islam is above all a religion of peace and mercy, and that as Muslims, we are obligated to model those traits in our lives and characters and to work for the good of our society. It is amazing to think that although just 3% of the American population is Muslim, Muslims account for 10% of America's physicians. Many Muslim physicians will quote the verse in the Quran that states, whoever saves one life, it is as if he had saved mankind entirely. Life is to be valued, nurtured, and preserved. And this is stated in the Sharia. Many are unaware of what the Sharia is, that, is it, that it is simply guidance from which we obtain the law. There is so much misinformation about this as well. Few realize that the six principles of Sharia are the right to the protection of life, the right to the protection of family, the right to the protection of education, the right to the protection of religion, the right to the protection of property, and the right to the protection of human dignity. A few years ago, Arizona moved to ban Sharia, probably not knowing the principles. But they wanted to do it in a way that seemed non-discriminatory. So they did so in the name of religious law. As well as banning Sharia, they also banned canon law, halakha, and karma. Yes, they moved to ban karma. I thought karma meant one's destiny, so I'm not sure how they planned to ban it, <laughs> but they did. After shootings in San Bernardino, American Muslims became more aware, sorry, became more of a target than ever before, and it reminded me of the time of 9-11. After 9-11, a Sikh gentleman was gunned down for looking foreign, just looking foreign. I remember the Imam from the Hartford Mosque calling all the women he was aware of who wore the headscarf or hijab, advising us not to go out for a few weeks. I re remember being able to do this for a whole week, and then one morning I realized that we had run out of milk. At that time, my kids were very young and permitted milk drinkers, so I decided yeah. I would make a quick stop, uh, a quick trip to Stop and Shop, and get those two gallons of milk and the other back. I remember very clearly parking my car and walking into the store. I remember feeling every eye in the store was watching me. And I felt that uncomfortable feeling, a guilt by association. <coughs> I remember thinking, why oh why is milk always at the back of the store? <laughs> I thought I'd pick up the pace a little when I noticed at, at the 
corner of my eye, a woman looking very intently at me. Maybe I didn't need those gallons of milk after all, but I was right there in the milk area, so I picked up those gallons and walked as fast as I could towards the counter. But I noticed the faster I walked, the faster this woman walked towards me. I really felt fear, real fear, for the first time. And then she hugged me. And she said, I know your community is going through so much. She said that her neighbor was Muslim, and she was picking up some things for her, and asked me if there was anything she could do for me. What made the difference with this woman is that she knew a Muslim personally, and this made all the difference to me. It is so vitally important to come to know each other at a human level. This leads to understanding, and not just tolerance, but respect and love. The Quran says, O mankind, we created you from a single pair of a male and a female, and made you into nations and tribes that you may come to know one another, not that you may despise each other. Verily, the most honored of you in the sight of God <coughs> is he who is the most righteous, and God has full knowledge and is well acquainted with all things. When describing righteousness, the Quran says, it is not righteousness that you turn your faces towards the east or the west, but it is righteousness to believe in God and the last day and the angels and the scriptures and the messengers, to spend of your substance out of love for him, for your kin, for orphans, for the needy, for the wayfarer, for those who ask, and for the ransom of slaves, to be steadfast in prayer and practice regular charity, to fulfill the contracts which you have made and to be firm and patient in pain and adversity and throughout all periods of suffering and panic. Such are the people of truth, the righteous. After the events of San Bernardino and the increased rhetoric against Muslims, after shots were fired at a mosque in Maryland in Connecticut, I am so comforted by those who have come to our mosques, like Westover School, to show their support and stand with us. I'm so proud to know people who make an effort to see humanity and strive to humanize all rather than just some. I pray that we increase our awareness, our love, and respect for all those around us, and that we strive to work together in all that is good. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum.